The Breast Cancer Society of Canada, the researchers, and London Health Sciences Foundation have a unique and collaborative relationship, as you can see, which is the model of funding supported and repeated by BCSC across Canada. So there has been a lot of research done looking at um, different subtyping of breast cancer now because they have different gene profiles. They behave very differently. And again, I could put 10 women in front of you with a diagnosis of breast cancer. How we would treat it would be quite different in all of them. How it would behave in all of them would be quite, quite different just because we understand it is a uh, very heterogeneous disease. So that's been because of the work of researchers identifying these. And a perfect example, one of the biggest successes in oncology has been related to something called HER2 new positive breast cancer. This is a breast cancer that historically used to be one of the deadliest forms of breast cancer, but nobody ever knew why. And it wasn't until, because of the persistence of another researcher, an oncologist named Dennis Slayman, who figured out that it was this particular gene showing up in about 20% of breast cancers that led to it being so aggressive. So because they found the gene and its downstream effects, as a result, that breast cancer has gone from being one of the deadliest to one of the most curable breast cancers, and cu I mean curable. And that is because as a result, we've been able to design very specific treatments targeted against this kind of breast cancer. Um, and truly, in 2005, there were 10,000 people, I was in the audience at the presentation at our big international oncology meeting, and people were actually crying when the results of this, um, this data was published in early breast cancer. So, um, deadliest disease to one of the most curable diseases as a result. We need to know who to treat. We need to know specifically with what to treat them and when we should treat them. And if we look at the early setting, ideally if we can find markers, easily identifiable markers that will tell us who has deadly disease versus potentially not, because not all cancers are going to kill people, then we are going to be able to identify who needs treatment and then help us identify specifically what treatment they need. So those early markers are really, really important. And Dr. Allen is doing, is, um, Allen is doing some really pioneering work in this. Secondly, it's what kills breast cancer patients. It's metastatic disease. We're not good enough yet. Um, we need to understand the disease better from a gene profile, how these diseases behave. We need to understand resistance to the current treatments that we're using. And so we need to be able to identify that disease. We need to be able to identify those patients as well. Why does this disease spread in some people and not others? How do we target that? How do we best treat it? And again, that's, that's absolutely essential work that uh, Dr. Chambers is contributing to. So um, we have the expertise, the people here to do this. And these are some of the most important areas of work. Patients <clears throat> that die from their breast cancer will die from metastatic disease, but only a very small amount of effort and dollars, importantly, are going towards cancer research focused on metastasis. Um, the most of the funding is going towards looking at other things and has certainly made progress. So an example in my program, um, <clears throat> we do study the very basic science of why do cells metastasize? Why do they spread? Mm -hmm. Um, we don't even understand that sometimes. So we study that, we try to figure out new proteins like HER2 so that we could identify new drugs. Um, but more sort of immediate to the patients, we're working very hard on developing blood tests for, um, <clears throat> for detecting metastasis as it happens in real time. And so <clears throat> in your body, uh, your bloodstream is kind of like a highway. So it's like the 401. The tumor cells, <coughs> the tumor cells need, they need that highway to spread and to go to distant organs, to the lung, to the liver, to the brain. And this blood test, we think of it sort of as the traffic cop to sort of catch the bad guys, catch the speeders, identify them early so that we can hopefully stop them, do something about them, stop them from doing more damage. Um, so we've we're very pleased that this year, um, in January actually, we partnered with Clinical Lab Services to actually move one of these tests into the clinic uh, here at LHSC. Um, and in the next few years, we hope it's gonna be actually available to um, all patients here and also across Canada. Um, and the other thing in when we go back to the lab is that we're working on um, 
you know, characterizing how, you know, Kylie said she can put 10 women in front of you and they'll have 10 different diseases. So this blood test, we want to be able to say to each woman, your breast cancer has these specific characteristics and that means that you are eligible for this drug and we know that it will work in you and we can get to that drug right away instead of kind of guessing and some of, because some of the older drugs are very toxic. Um, so this blood test is helping us not only sort of see those speeders, but also figure out exactly what it is that makes them so bad and sort of nip them in the bud. Mm -hmm. So. I first uh, sat down with Anne and Allison and heard about uh, Pamela's story. I uh, was moved uh, beyond anything because I realized that just by the simple passage of 10 years, um, I could have been her. And that because of the legacy and courage uh, of your daughter and, and the Greenaway family, uh, there are people like me, I'm just one patient of thousands that pass through the cancer program, uh, but you've made a difference in so many lives. Uh, as you heard Dr. Potvin say that we've just had such incredible um, uh, discoveries and advances in survivability uh, in the last 10 years, and I want you to keep working on that. <laughs> uh, in, in my particular experience, what, what I witnessed was what we have um, a true gift in here with this center is when you have um, you got the medical front line who has direct access and collaboration with the science frontier. It's all happening in one place. There is a constant sharing of information. Uh, so rather than, in my case, uh, waiting for advances to percolate through conferences and boards and, and, and new decisions on what standardized treatment should mean, I had an oncologist who had direct access and was coming back uh, to, to the uh, clinics and calling me up and saying, you know, we've, we've restudied your pathologies, we've, we've run it again, and we've just found out some exciting news and we'd like to change up your treatment. Here's all the data. We've all discussed it and, and reviewed your case uh, and we would really, uh, we really invite you to participate in this treatment. That's all I needed to hear. Uh, and so certainly I benefited from the incredible advances right in the early stages of my treatment with HER2 uh, and then with some further advances a couple of years later uh, when I was just about finished with the program and uh, they, they, they made some further discoveries. oncologist was able to immediately act on information rather than working uh, waiting for a conference or a journal article could come through and to discuss it at another meeting or, or society symposium and debate it uh, there was a full round table available to him where all of this information could be shared immediately and so start making a difference right away um, when you're in a situation like me and, and so many others who have been through the journey that are, have joined us today, you don't necessarily have the luxury of waiting a year uh, to find out um, whether this is the new thing. Um, so that's, that's what I've seen and that's what I've experienced. From a scientist's perspective, it's really important for us to have physicians because when we read about something or have an idea, it's really important to be able to go to a physician and say, if I did this, would this be useful to you? Sometimes they'll say no, because I wouldn't be able to use that information. Other times they sort of steer what you're doing and say, well, it would really be useful if you could do this instead. It, it's very much a two-way street. We need to know what the medical needs are now, and we need to help explain what we can do so that physicians can then think about where we can go. And it, it's a very interactive two-way street. Just the geography of us being located directly in the same building as the patient care. This means that Ann and I walk in every day through the treatment center and you know once or twice a month I will see a young woman you know the same age as me the same age as Kai Kylie sees this probably every day and they have children the same age as mine and I think my god like that could be me that could be my sister that could be my friend and that's just it's incredibly motivating it just puts in a sense of urgency for us to do 
you know, to work hard and to do relevant research. Is Eva Turley, who, um, you know, is just chatting with one of our radiation oncologists who had observed um, a lot of um, skin problems with patients who were receiving radiation. And Eva sort of said, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm researching this this protein called HA and we know from other applications that it actually works really well for skin and so a partnership became available in a clinical trial um, to sort of help that so that you know that goes to the quality of life issue and and just you know chatting in the hall or as we interact with our students with each other these ideas just come and and you know we sort of go our separate ways do our own expertise and come together to solve a problem. some work on with Dr. Paula Foster on brain metastasis and better ways to detect them in the clinic. So that she started with work in mice and now there's a clinical trial that's been set up with a lot of the physicians and physicists here that's testing whether her ideas are in fact going to give better diagnosis of brain metastases for breast cancer patients. So I, I think the, the funding is, is just crucial. Just Thank something you. that I particularly learned from uh, speaking with uh, Anne and Allison that I think is so exciting just for cancer generally is that a lot of the work and advances that are being made within the TBCRU uh, lend themselves to treatment in other forms of cancer. So um, this in the big picture is really not just about breast cancer, it's about uh, dealing with all forms of the illness. So there's just so much exciting that's going on here.